there's this day. Actually, remember, day 116. Don't worry, this is not even close to the finale. Golf will continue. I feel like I have to say that every video because all the comments are like, when's the cut going to start? <sighs> you guys are fucking... It sounds like you're asking, when's next Christmas? Come on, we have a while. So the plan for today is chest with incline dumbbell bench. It's back. Finally back. No more of this incline barbell mumbo jumbo. I might still do incline barbell, but I'm definitely going to do some incline dumbbell. It's, uh, it's just a different feeling. I guess I'll just kind of get into it now, but you got to remember with incline, with, well, of course, I probably want you to do incline, just for my opinion. Uh, but with any kind of barbell press at the top, that's sort of the resting position. Nobody's taking a breath to do another rep and holding it in the hole. Right? They straighten their arms out completely, so the entire load of the bar is pretty much just getting supported by you know, your fucking bones. You know, Your chest doesn't have to flex so much up here just holding the bar. And it does down here when you're like actually doing the fucking rep. Uh, but with dumbbells, you don't really get that rest. Like you do a little bit, you're still holding them up straight, but just the nature of the fact that your hands are individually loaded and there's nothing keeping them together, then it's kind of just a constant pec activator throughout the whole range of motion with really crazy squeeze on top and a normal stretch at the bottom. Honestly, the bottom of any chest pressing movement, be it Smith, dumbbell, barbell, the bottom feels pretty similar across the board, but as you go up, that's where you really start to feel the differences. So really, I mean, if you had to ask me which kind of pressing movement I would prefer indefinitely, I'd have to pick dumbbell, even though I haven't been doing it, which is a little bit hypocritical of me, but dumbbell's legit, man. That's the plan for today's lift. The gym I'm going to has a pair of 150s, which based on how strong I feel, I don't think that'll be a problem. I keep telling them they need to get heavier dumbbells. And I've heard that uh, every time people have said that, they're like, well, you know, nobody lifts the 150s, so we'll just we'll keep them as we are. Come on, man. Come on calling you out but either way so that'll probably make up most of the heavy pressing if it feels good I'm not gonna mind sitting and doing probably four or five sets of incline dumbbell maybe progressively getting lighter because uh, after <sighs> just kind of guessing after maybe two or three sets of 150s it's gonna start to feel pretty heavy my rule for wanting to lighten the weight is, uh, you know, let's say you, you're about to bench the hundreds. That's what, that's what you're rocking. Uh, if you get to a point where you can only do, like, let's say your first set was 12 reps, second set was 10 reps, third rep was 8 reps, or third set was 8 reps, uh, typically at that 8 rep mark, that's when I would want to actually decrease the weight. And maybe it's just me having a personal preference, but most of my working sets, I don't like to go below eight. Eight is about the lowest that I like. <sighs> now, of course, there's probably somebody out there who's like, well, every set that I do is seven reps. I get pretty good fucking results. And I'm not saying you don't. That's just kind of my personal deal with it. So... That's usually the limit. If I can't do a weight for eight reps, maybe like six with some assistance. So let's say I'm doing incline barbell and I can get X number of pounds or six and then I can get two partials with uh, some assistance or two assisted reps, then eh, I'll count that too. But if I can't get eight-ish, too heavy, too freaking heavy. of thumb. Now when it comes to my rest periods, I still get this comment a lot, even though I've talked about it. Well, I guess I used to talk about it a lot, and now I haven't, so I'm sure you're not watching every single video start to finish. 
or maybe not you, but just people in general. But in terms of the rest periods, it's not really a cut and dry rule. I don't set a timer after each set for like a minute and a half. And then as soon as it goes off, that's my cue to jump onto the next set. I really just kind of go by, do I feel ready for it? And if you're actually kind of into your training, then whenever you feel ready, I feel like that is when you're about ready, you know? If you're not really into your lift, like if you can tell you get distracted really easily, or you just, it's hard for you to really get in the zone, then I could see the benefit of a timer. Just because if you do a set and then you start talking to your buddies, six fucking minutes will pass. And I don't know about you, but typically my lifts do not end up well or end up with the craziest bump ever if I've got six minute rest periods. And I sound like I'm training for a fucking powerlifting. So, usually, it depends on the intensity of the set, like how taxing it is, how much oxygen debt it put me in. Because after a set of, um, after a set of, like, pec deck, if I do a set of pec deck here later, it might take a minute, and then do it again. Because really, the only thing getting worked is my chest. And since pec deck would be more of a lighter squeezing movement, you know, my pecs aren't absolutely destroyed at the end of it. Whereas <sighs> whereas after something like barbell squats, which I'm just fucking dying <laughs> afterwards, that could be more like fucking five minutes. But I know I just ripped on you know, a really long rest period, but that's just how long it is for a set like that. So really just take it. Take a minute, take two minutes, catch your breath, get your heart rate back down to your normal workout level. Of course, when you're actually in the gym during your workout, it's going to be elevated, but there's, you know, it'll look like this. You've got your in-between set rate, mid-set, peak set, and then it'll drop back down. And by the time it gets back down to that baseline-ish, you should feel comfortable. And as long as you feel fresh enough to hit that set for a considerable amount of reps as you just did, then I think you're good. But if I tried to do a set of the 150s, put them down, breathe for 30 seconds, and then pick them up again, that's not enough time. So you kind of have to go by feel with that sort of thing. But if I had to really cut it down to like a time frame, yeah, I'm probably doing two minutes. I'm probably doing two minutes on average. So let's just hope it's not too busy. It's I feel like this is rush hour, five o'clock. Everybody's getting off work. Everybody's done chilling when they get back from high school. Oh, wish I could just leave and wait a little bit there. Uh, but even if it's packed, who gives a fuck, man? Get a good workout anyway, don't complain. So let's uh, just go get warmed up and jump to whatever the first working set is gonna end up being. All right. I've done a very extensive cable warm-up through the 110s around, through the 130s around. Time to, time to show the 150s their place. more honestly i wish i had a pair of 170s right now just based on how that felt but let's run it back
Let's just keep going with this weight until I can't get eight reps. Oh my god. Okay. Let's move on. That felt fucking sweet though. Almost zero front delt activation. I felt like it was all chest. I wonder if I've been wasting my time a little bit doing so much incline barbell. But whatever. Let's move on to something else. I think this is the perfect time to jump on this incline chest press machine. some flies Sorry. I wanted to do cable but they were taken I don't mind this pack tech though so this will be a good one I'll take a half hiccup slash burp Yeah, fuck this. Let's get a cable. Or a pair of them, rather. These are kind of the scrappy cables, but they'll still get the job done. So, plan is kind of some top to bottom flies. Oh, I've done pretty much everything inclined so far, so this will change it up just a little bit and be a little bit more declined. But either way, let's just make it a good set. We're nearly done. No. <sighs> 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 Okay. One more. Okay. Okay. 
Let's go pose down. Okay, so yeah, incline dumbbell is back. It's fucking back. But if it's so good, why would I stop doing it? And that's, I mean, I kind of go through phases with movements. Sometimes I love squats and sometimes I'm doing a ton of leg extensions. Sometimes, uh, sometimes I go months on end doing incline barbell and then sometimes I do some dumbbells. You know, I don't mind it. Honestly, I'm sure in a few, maybe a month or two, I might go back to incline barbell and be like, oh, incline barbell feels so fucking good. It just kind of, it just kind of comes and goes. Oh, well, you tell me. <laughs> oh, shit. Oh, shit. Don't even have to say anything. Let's just hit a couple. <laughs> oh, yeah. That is fucking juicy as all hell. Oh man, what else even is there? No. I could sit here forever, but I just ran over here after that last set of fucking uh, cable flies. So I'm gonna finish drinking my drink chat and then we can get in the car and get out of here all right lift over post lift chit chat over and it's only 720 what the fuck am i supposed to do with the rest of the day i guess that's for me to find out and you not to know but i can guarantee there will be a substantial amount of calories in between now and whenever I go bet. So let's uh, let's just think. Yeah, incline dumbbell was a fucking baller move. That is going to be continued from now on for a very long fucking period. All chest, good squeeze, really good stretch. Every positive lifting buzzword under the sun. his right blinker. He still has his right blinker on. Okay, well now he turned. But whatever. Yeah. Incline, dumbbell is going to continue. But I got to go fucking heavier. 150s is not enough. That was, uh, honestly, that first set kind of felt like a warm-up set. Like I wanted to, I was like, okay. <laughs> like as soon as I did the first like three reps, I was like, alright, well, I mean, it'll be a good set, you know. I ended up hitting failure, but Probably would have preferred something like, I don't know, maybe saying the 170s is a little bit ambitious. The most I've ever done for real sets is the 150s. So I never really touched above that. So, who's to say? There is another gym near me which has dumbbells the weight I'm looking for. I'm pretty sure they go up to like one, um, I don't know, more than I need. They definitely have at least the 150s. And they're like the in-tech ones, the really fancy steel ones. So I think next chest day, I'm going to have to make a trip over there specifically for some heavy-ass dumbbells. But even though, I mean, even though it's probably better, it's still good doing incline barbell. Incline barbell is still good. Incline smith is still good. It's just good to kind of circulate through movement in your training. You know, if you keep doing the exact same lift... Day in, day out, week in, month out. Look, you gotta change it up a little. So, if you think you've been doing a lot of incline barb, oh yeah. Okay. If you think you've been doing a lot of incline barbell, maybe swap it out, man. Throw some dumbbell in there. Or if you've been doing dumbbell for a while and you kind of want to change it up, maybe throw some barbell. You know, don't get too stale. It's not like I think that. If you do a really hard workout and then you do the same workout again the next whenever that chest day is, I think you're still going to get gains from it, of course. I don't think the fact that you're doing the same workout will, at least in terms of like exercise selection, 
I don't think it's going to make the workout worthless, of course, but it will be a different stimulus if you do different movements. So in case you've been, in case maybe you've been missing out on a certain kind of stretch or contraction from incline barbell that you haven't been getting with incline dumbbell, switching it up ever so often, even if you're not missing out, it'll just make sure that you really hit everything. So heavy dumbbells to come, more freaky ass pumps to come, I mean, more weight to come simply. So morning weight tomorrow, I'm hoping 257. Or actually I'm not hoping, I know it's gonna be 257 after I fill up tonight. So that'll be a cool number to see. This is the heaviest I've ever been. Even just saying that kind of gets me fucking riled up. But even though some of that is body fat just from the nature of, you know, bulking. So what? Dude, come on. So what if I don't have as many ab veins or any ab veins right now? You don't get to see yourself huge and lean without getting big and soft first. At least that's sort of my take with the bulking and cutting style. I guess if you're a main gainer, if you're making solid gains that way, then you're fucking spoiled. You get to be lean all the time. But that's not really an approach that I'm uh, I'm locking into anytime soon. Mm. Huh. I'm trying to think of something to discuss. But I feel like that chest day kind of talked for itself, man. I mean... <laughs> I don't really have any critiques for it. That was just a really good one. And I was kind of getting really excited when I was doing those incline dumbbells. And partially just because it was kind of feeding my ego. Because at that gym, the 150s are the heaviest dumbbell. So if you ever get to a point where you're lifting the heaviest dumbbells at the gym, uh, pretty much pressing is where that's actually a little bit of a feat. Anybody can do a really nasty set of rows. You know, people, you'll see that sometimes. But when you grab the heaviest dumbbells, you do kind of feel a little extra cool. There is a little bit of a coolness factor that you get. But cardio in the morning, I know you're not doing it. I, I couldn't tell you why you're not doing it. It's one of the great mysteries of, uh, of this worldwide group of lifters, which I don't think I'll ever understand. But some of you, some of you I know have been doing cardio on a consistent basis. You hop on the seated bike, you hop on the treadmill, uh, maybe you go for a fucking jog. Whichever style you like lets you raise your heart elevation, or lets you raise your heart rate to, I don't know what stage, just enough where, like when I say burn 300 calories a day, like that's what I do. I sit on the bike, put it to level 12, pedal for 30 minutes, at the end of that 30 minutes, the machine says at least 300 calories. That number is probably fucking stupid. Because you got to remember, if you put someone who's not trained at all, and you had him pedal for 30 minutes, he's not going to be so efficient. Right? So a guy whose cardio is total trash, when he does 30 minutes on a seated bike, he's probably going to burn more calories than, say, you know, like a, uh, like a marathon cyclist because they're more efficient. But, I mean, just break a sweat. Honestly, that's what I'm really satisfied with. Sometimes I'll go through stints where I do kind of, um, uh, I go kind of extra with the cardio. Like, uh, I love skipping a rope, but it kind of, kind of sucks when you get this heavy, because if I, if I try to skip rope, like, again, you just sort of feel cool when you do it. I'm listening like a fucking Rocky soundtrack or whatever. But when you get above, I mean, when you're in the 200s and you're just bouncing around your toes like that on the ground, uh, it, it gives me fucking shin splints, which kind of sucks. Because, like, I don't know if you've ever felt having shin splints when you're doing, like, a really heavy squat. Uh, I don't think this would ever actually happen, but it feels like my fucking shins are going to snap in half when I get into the hole. Uh, which, if that's a feeling I can avoid, then... I'm probably going to, so no jumping rope for me. The seated bike, the uh, the recumbent bike, that's enough. That is a freaking enough. So, da, 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 da. what else?
else? What freaking else? Uh, oh, yeah, in terms of music taste, I got a little bit of inspo from TikTok today. Uh, I was just listening to a bunch of the, like the SpongeBob AI rap songs on SoundCloud. Uh, as stupid as it sounds, they go pretty fucking hard. And honestly, I, I kind of like jokey music like that, like parodies and shit and uh, like Weird Al Yankovic. I used to listen to a ton of that. I thought it was just fucking funny. But whatever you get to listen to to get hyped up, I got no problem with it. I must have run through all my fucking glycogen, man. I got nothing on my brain. So I'm going to go home, make a steak, have two packs of Uncle Ben's cheddar broccoli rice. Uh, I've got a bunch of ice cream sandwiches in my freezer. I'll probably eat six of them and then and then who's to say maybe i'll have some ramen i don't have any milk maybe i need to stop at kroger and get some i've been i've been lacking on my cereal game for the last few weeks not good either way the bulk bulks on lifts gonna maintain high intensity as we should all be doing. And I think that's all I gotta fucking say, man. Maybe I'll have a few more uh, a few more topics of discussion tomorrow. But cardio in the morning, followed by I think it's a system modeling lab. Or maybe it's a thermal fluid studio lab. I don't remember. I have some kind of lab tomorrow. And then back tomorrow night. I'm sure you won't be surprised by the back day in terms of the exercise choices, but fully pumped and fully carved up. I'm excited to see my fucking back pumped up. Even though I literally just finished the chest day, I'm already getting hyped up about tomorrow. That's the way to do it. So, no more random ass rambling. I'll let you get back to whatever you're doing. Or if you're staying up late watching this video, uh, go to sleep. Right. Come on. You gotta remember that's where you're really building muscle. So that's all I got. I will uh, see you next time.